To those who've been following my videos, welcome back. To those of you who have no idea who I am, I'm Dr. James Johnson, a medical and clinical director of Vitreous Floater Solutions. Uh, Vitreous Floater Solutions is a medical practice based in Southern California. We are the only medical practice exclusively dedicated to treating bothersome eye floaters. If you have bad floaters, I implore you to visit my website, vitreousfloatersolutions.com. There's a lot of information there for you. As far as the videos go, this following, I'm going to set this up. Um, and it's put in perspective in the sense that many doctors suggest to patients complaining of floaters that uh, if you give it time, your brain will get used to it. Well, you know, after six months to a year or so, you'll have an idea that many of you can't. In addition, they'll often suggest that if you give it time, it'll drop out of the way. Well, what you're about to see is a floater that did just that. It had actually the ideal outcome as suggested by your doctor. Now, this patient didn't feel the same way about it. Uh, this floater uh, was heavier in a fairly liquid environment and it would drop down. Now, it would be okay if she never had to move her eye or move her head, but every time she looked down and look up, this floater would actually, uh, was big enough and thick enough and dense enough that it would actually come up and obstruct her vision. So hundreds of times a day, her vision would fluctuate from 20-20, good, to literally obstructed or maybe hand motions vision uh, and doing that over and over and over. That is something that nobody could possibly get used to. Um, it was bad enough when it happened to one eye, and by the time it happened to the second eye, it had really just shut down the quality of her life. So she found me uh, through an internet search, much like many of you have found me, and did her research, did her due diligence, and you know, ultimately she had to take a risk and, and, and take a chance and come out and visit me. Uh, so I'm going to show a progression of videos. This is over the course of three treatments. This is just her left eye. Um, and I'll narrate as we go through that. So that's a little bit of setup. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you're watching this through YouTube, uh, go ahead and give it the thumbs up if you've learned something or if you found it valuable. And uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me directly through my website. I try to answer them all personally and get a little bit, bit behind. It takes me a little while to catch up. So anyways, enjoy. All right, so now we're looking at my view through the microscope at the laser, and I'm asking the patient to look down and then uh, look straight ahead again. And as she does so, it flicks the uh, floater up and it drifts right down there. So I've frozen the frame and this uh, right behind the lens is this large, uh, it appears as a white cloudy mass to us because the light is reflecting off the front surface of it. Uh, the patient sees this uh, large, dense, dark, blurry thing obstructing the vision. Now the pupil is widely dilated and shown here in red is the widely dilated pupil. This is probably about nine millimeters or so, which is very large. And uh, the, the whitish floater here is large, uh, but light could get around it and it would partially obstruct the vision. It would be a real annoyance and a distraction. Now, what I'm going to show you here is the pupil under normal circumstances in normal daylight, bright light outside. And the pupil here is probably about three millimeters or so and uh, you can see that floater would completely obstruct the vision. So this patient is alternating between 20-20 good vision to hand motions vision on a, you know, hundreds of times a day, which is totally unacceptable, I think, for anybody. So as we switch back to live action again, you can then uh, have a better appreciation for the dynamics and the movement of this floater. Now I'm used to chasing after moving floaters, but the problem with this one in particular is that it uh, floats very, very close to the lens. And, and in a moment I'll show you the distance between there, but it creates a problem in that the laser imparts energy on the floater and we don't want any of that collateral energy to strike the lens, which could potentially cause a cataract. This is a very difficult problem to approach because uh, you know to leave this would be um, meaning that the patient would have to suffer this thing you know, potentially for the rest of her life unless she could find someone to do a surgical procedure. So here's a trace of the outline of the, uh, the floater. This is in cross-section. I, I use a slit beam light. It's a slice of light uh, passing through the lens and you can see the, the outline of the lens. And uh, the thickness of that is about typically about four millimeters. And just behind that, perhaps a quarter of a millimeter, 0.25 millimeter away from the lens is the floater. This is the dilemma. So I've created a small graphic to show uh, kind of a cross-section where this floater is located. And uh, as if you're able to slice the eye in half, it would be sitting down 
uh, it sits down low. That's where it wants to disappear to. It'll slide up behind that, that bluish colored lens and drop right down into this recessed area down below. It's an area that you can't hit directly with the laser. It's kind of a hidden hidden spot um, down in the, the cul-de-sac there. So I've got a, uh, a, a unique way of treating this and I believe this is the first description of this technique. Here are two lenses that I commonly use. The one on the left is a Payman lens. Uh, it is very small, lightweight, and plastic. Uh, it is a diagnostic and therapeutic le uh, contact lens that is on contact with the eye. On the concave surface there is where I put the goopy gel which couples it to the eye. I can actually let go of it and it will stay attached to the eye during treatment. To the right is a much larger lens. This is the Goldman lens. This is the lens that most doctors have available to them. It's a, really a, a, a standard lens that has been available for some time, uh, mostly used to look at the retina. Uh, I, of course, use it in the vitreous. Now, what's unique about this lens is that there is a central clear zone in the center, but you can also appreciate three uh, other images surrounding it, and these are mirrors. The mirrors are at different angles, and they allow you to look into different areas way out into the periphery uh, of the retina, and even uh, as sharply angled of one mirror that will allow you to look um, towards the recesses of the far reaches of the iris. Um, in the video shown here, I was able to use one of the mirrors to angle the laser down into the lower uh, aspect of the, of the eye to get a, a floater that would sweep up very close to the lens and then drop back down. As it dropped back down, it dropped a little further away from the, the lens and allowed for, for a shot. I think this is the first time anybody has described using the mirrors with the YAG laser to treat floaters. Uh, it's a unique situation. It doesn't arise very often, but I've used it with uh, some success and in some cases some great success. So here's a drawing, another schematic to give a, a better view of what uh, we did with the Goldman lens. Uh, this obviously is the eye in cross section. It's a cutaway, uh, transparent cutaway. What we have here is the cornea up in the front, the lens right here. Uh, the Goldman lens is sitting in, in contact with the eye. What I've tried to draw here is a cone-shaped pattern of energy of the invisible laser. In the upper and lower portions of that cone are my red focusing beams. So as I aim the cone at the mirror, it angles it down into this re recess right here. It's an area that I wouldn't normally be able to, to get at because of the edge of the pupil and it's just kind of around the corner a little bit here. So by using the mirror, I'm able to focus on the floater where it drops down and drops down away from the lens. Normally with eye movement, it would come right up here against the lens and drop right back down again here. And uh, when it drops down here, it's really quite stable. So this is just another view and uh, to give a little bit better understanding of how the laser is being oriented and how uh, the contact lens in this case is uh, a special use. Okay, we're back to our original patient again and uh, it is a little bit on the dark side. I am firing directly through the center portion of the Goldman lens that I just described and in a moment we're going to, uh, seeing as there's not much target here, we're going to move upwards and as I move the laser upwards and then we're now going to be looking through the upper mirror looking downwards into the bottom part of the eye. And uh, it's it's very, very critical in, in doing this. Everything has to be lined up just right. The lighting and the laser are competing for the same narrow space. And uh, in, in this case, it's really dropped the, the energy delivery of the laser way down. Uh, I'm not seeing much in the way of bubbles um, or movement. And so I know that even though it's in focus for me and the laser's in focus, it's not actually delivering much energy. So uh, the way to handle this is, well, you keep trying. You have to make small adjustments. You have to uh, move the, the lit lens slightly laterally this way, that way, and you find some combination that works. And I think in just a moment here, I actually switched the light source to the opposite side where the lighting was then a little bit better and uh, just kept working on it, kept working on it. What ultimately happened is, is I was able to get some energy on it with the right combination. I don't think I have very good video of that, unfortunately, um, but able to break up some of the adhesions that were holding it down in that space and breaking it free and was then able to go after it uh, through some of the more conventional methods uh, with the other lenses. So now we're back at the beginning of the third consecutive day of treatment and um, having the, I'm using a wide angle lens again, the Goldman lens, and doing some, some, some wide angle scanning just to uh, see if there's any large chunks left behind. 
and uh, have the person look left and right and uh, in a moment we'll have her look down and look back up and that was a movement a maneuver that very consistently brought that that large floater into place and as I do so we don't we're not seeing uh, that large floater anymore and uh, so in, in spite of this this floater's very very difficult and challenging location uh, using some unique maneuvers, particularly the mirrored angled shot of the Goldmon lens, I was able to use the uh, the energy of the YAG laser to break it up, move it into a more manageable and more treatable position, and then go after it with uh, some conventional methods. And uh, as you can see right here, the uh, there there really is no large chunk of floater left behind. Uh, so for those of you who uh, wonder if this is even a legitimate treatment, if this treatment even exists. Um, well, what can I say? It's what I do. This is the only uh, procedure that I do. Uh, my practice exclusively is dedicated to this procedure. And uh, even for the very, very difficult ones, we will see some, uh, some really uh, quite good successes. It is a surgical procedure, and it is not without any risk. Uh, it is a difficult procedure to treat younger people. Those under the age of 30 to 35 have been consistently the most difficult to treat. Uh, some of them are treatable, uh, but I implore you to go to my website and read about uh, some of the, the intricacies and the challenges of using the YAG laser. But for those of you who have very large floaters in particular, or very, very bothersome floaters that uh, are really something that you just can't get used to, uh, it is potentially an option for you. And uh, rather than having to learn to live with it for the next 20, 30, 40 years or so, uh, it might be worth your while to, uh, to get it checked out and see if you might be a good candidate for treatment. So again, this is Dr. James Johnson. I hope you learned something. And uh, this has been a particularly satisfying treatment. I thought I'd share it with you and maybe we could all le learn a little something from it. Hope you have a great day. Check out the website at www.vitreousfloatersolutions.com and I look forward to hearing from you.